Greetings brothers and sisters. Welcome once again to Restoring Eden Ministries. And in this video, we are going to look at the effects of Mystery Babylon in the church. We are going to assess how deeply rooted are we in pushing the heartbeat of Mystery Babylon unawarely. The Bible says, Babylon was a gold cup in the hand of the Lord making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine. Therefore, the nations have gone mad. Jeremiah 51 verse 7. This nations in Jeremiah is not only the world or unbelievers, but also believers have found themselves to be mad from drinking the wine of Babylon. We are going to use Revelation 17 and 18 to assess how close is our friendship with Mystery Babylon and what we need to do to come out of Mystery Babylon because Revelation 18 verse 4 commands the people of God to come out of Mystery Babylon. The focus in this video, I need to stress this, is not who Mr. Babylon is. We are not going to say Mr. Babylon is Rome, Mr. Babylon is New York, Mr. Babylon is uh, Jerusalem, like everyone is saying. Here, we are going to look at uh, the effects of Mr. Babylon, especially in the church. What are the abominations and the impurities that Mr. Babylon has that the church finds herself indulging in? Can we just start by looking at her name? Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. On her forehead was written a name of mystery. And that name is Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of all the earth's abomination. The first thing that the Bible says in terms of identity is that she is Babylon the Great. Do you know what the word Babylon means? The word Babylon it's actually a two-part word. Uh, the word Bab means gate and Elion is of the gods. So the word Babylon is the gate of the gods. Isn't that strange that there is what the Bible calls a gateway to the gods? Do we have anything that suggests that there is such a thing in the Bible? Let's hear what Satan says in uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. He says, and God knows that when you eat of the fruit your eyes will be open and you will become like the gods knowing good and evil this verse made english bible interpreters confused what does satan mean when he says you will become like the gods so when they translated it uh, in in the bible they said no let's just say he is saying you become like God, but that's not what Satan said. Satan said you will become like the gods. It's Elohim in plural, you know, and it's not only here in Psalms 82 verse 1. The Bible says God presides over the heaven's courts and in the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. There is something called the gods and there is a gateway to the gods. Jacob in the book of Genesis he said this place is none other than the gate to heaven or the gateway to heaven. The gateway to the gods is the gate to heaven. Uh, before you reach the, the high heavens where Yahweh dwells, you pass through what we call the second heaven. And that second heaven is what Apostle Paul speaks about in the book of Ephesians when he says uh, principalities, rulers and authorities. And what we need to know is that a uh, some of those divine beings or these gods that dwell there, those principalities, let me use a New Testament word, those principalities, they are not pure. Hear how Job 15 verse 15 puts it. He says, if God places no trust in his holy ones or the gods, if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less mere mortal beings. So, Job is saying that God places no trust in his holy ones, the gods. And he says that even there are parts of heaven that are not pure. He says if, if even the heavens are not pure in God's sight. So we need to know that there are parts of heaven, the second heaven, that is not pure. You know, it's the same thing that Pastor Paul speaks about when he says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but 
uh, against principalities and powers that are in heavenly places. So you need to know that they are they, they are impure heavenly beings in in the second heaven who desire worship for themselves, and they keep on knocking uh, on earth. They keep on putting it in the heart of men to open a gateway uh, for them to enter earth. That's what they put in the heart of Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11 when they were building a tower. They were creating a gateway for the gods or a portal for the gods to come and mingle themselves in the affairs of men, physically speaking. And these gods or these fallen divine beings, they have their own gospel and their gospel is very simple. This is their gospel. It says there are many gods and there are many ways that lead to heaven. And this idea is diametrically opposed to what the Bible says when it says the name of Yeshua is the only name that God has given to the earth of which man can be saved. So then the question is, how do Christians participate in this abomination? And how do Christians activate this energy of many gods and many ways to heaven? And I need you to know that we actually do. We are guilty of this abomination. Ask yourself, I ask myself also, what are the things that I do that suggests that there are many ways to heaven? And there are many gods. While you ask that, let's listen to this lady. Um, I would love to know what was your favorite thing to explore with such a complicated mother figure in the show. I love uh, that we are normalizing paganism. Um, Laura is a pagan. She's a witch. She's jacked. She's um, she's got to protect her daughter from demons. Every time you watch a movie from the world, you are saying. I am normalizing paganism like this lady. And what is paganism? Paganism is there are many gods and there are many ways to get to heaven. Let me be crucified for this. But every time when you you go to the cinema and watch anything from marvels, if I'm a Christian and if I watch Thor, the movie, I am saying there are many gods and there are many ways to heaven. Isaiah 47 verse 13 says, Babylon, let your astrologers come forward. Those stargazers who make predictions month by month, let them save you from what is coming upon you. This is what it says about Babylon. And yet, how many of us as Christians look at horoscopes, if you look at horoscopes, you are looking at these astrologers who predict month by month. When we look at horoscopes, we are saying there are many gods. There are many ways to heaven. We are guilty of this sin. If we read that book, The Secret, we are saying there are many gods. There are many ways to heaven. If you read that book, that book that you find in a Christian bookstore, um, what is this? What is the name of this book? The Sheik. That book, if you read it, you are saying there are many gods, there are many ways to heaven. Every time as a Christian, if I celebrate a pagan holiday, I am saying there are many gods, there are many ways to heaven. If I leave my son to Cartoon Network and he or she is taught magic by those cartoons, I am saying there are many gods. There are many ways to heaven. The Bible says, let no one be found amongst you who practices divination, who practices sorcery, or who interprets omens, or engage in witchcraft, or conjures up spells, who is a medium, or a spiritist who consults the dead. How many movies do we watch? How much of the music do we listen to that talks about conjuring up spells that has witchcraft in it you know it says no one of you must consult the dead how many of the christian movies do you see where a dead a dead member of the loved one comes and speak to you know we are doing this thing i mean just listen to what this guy is saying all right smith swigglesworth's grave um, in bradford it's up the, the other end of england you might not be able to come here naturally, but you can certainly feel it supernaturally what's happened in this man's life. And it's funny, all of us students, when we came here, the thing that we felt was uh, that like the raising of the dead power and the gift of faith came on us. And some students were leaning over the back of the grave and they felt a grace and a faith just rest on them. It's funny, isn't it? How, you know, Elijah, um, I think someone put the, the, the person's bones on his bones and they got raised up to life. 
when you come into a place where the Holy Spirit was on a person, he still exists there. He still keeps the heritage of the person's life. And he can see how his whole family buried with him. Um, but this is the man, this is Miss Wigglesworth. And, and the history of this man is a history of miracles and great faith and a restoration of the miraculous anointing into the Church of England and also across the whole world. Nobody consults the dead for anointing. Bethel Church and Bethel Music, all of you said there are many gods and there are many ways to heaven. We are actively participating in the opening of the gateway of the gods. We are guilty of this sin, whether we like it or not. As a church, we are guilty of this sin. So we need to repent from this sin. If my child is wearing a Spider-Man shirt, I am saying, I am declaring, whether I like it or not, I am declaring there are many gods. There are many ways to God. Babylon, opening a gateway to the gods. Have you done it? Because I've done it. And we need to repent. There's this song that I like. It says, you're something like a unicorn. I've discovered you. Make me the empress of your palace. I am enchanted by your voodoo. Enchanted by your voodoo? These are the songs that we listen to. She says, I'm enchanted by your voodoo. Enchanted by your voodoo? If this lady is saying, I am enchanted by your voodoo. This is a song that I like. You know, that I'm like, God, deliver me from these things. You know, it says, I'm enchanted by your voodoo. If we have to describe voodooism, it's a religious cult from Haiti. Uh, I thought it was from Benin because it was very strong there. I'm looking at, uh, what is this, Google. It says, a religious cult from Haiti involving witchcraft and sorcery, voodooism. And this lady is saying, I'm enchanted by your voodoo. So I'm listening to this song. And then when I am listening to it, I am saying, there are many gods. There are many ways to God. God deliver me from this abomination. Uh, am I, if I'm so deeply entrenched in Babylon, will I be able to come out when God begins to call his children to come out? Realistically speaking, am I, be, am I going to be able to come out? No, I'm not going to be able to come out. So by just looking at her name, we already see a plethora of abominations. That the Bible, that's why the Bible says she's holding a cup of abominations. Her name, when it says, is the gateway of the gods, it embodies all the things that the gods, uh, the fallen gods, are bringing uh, on earth. Things like sorcery, witchcraft, and all that. So, so we, by looking at her name, immediately we realize that her name actually embodies these abominations. And we see how attached the church is to the abominations of Babylon. So now let's look at the wine when it says the nation is drunk with the wine of Babylon. So what is the wine? Basically the wine is a substance. You know wine speaks of a substance that intoxicates our mental faculties and orientates our dreams and priorities and our objectives and our values. So we have to ask you one question. You have to ask me one question. What do I want in life? I ask you, what do you want in life? Because by answering that question, we will be able to know if you have the priorities and the objectives of Mr. Babylon or do I have the priorities and the objectives of the kingdom? We need to know that a uh, mystery Babylon has he has her own priorities and objectives, and she propagates her objectives uh, through school. Uh, he she propagates her objectives uh, through the stock market, through business, through the politics, you know, through medicine. Uh, you have to know that there was a point in life where medicine was changed and it became something else uh, that was not how God intended it. Today's medicine, as we have it, uh, is influenced so much so by the enemy. You know, so so I hope you know that school is an intentional discipleship program uh, from Mr. Babylon that tries to put uh, to put and to push its values in our minds. You know, that is why there is false teaching about money in schools. It's so scary. This program, you find some Christians actually holding to the to the view of this program because this program 
is intended to produce slaves for Babylon, you know, and you find you find some Christians who are seeking the same thing as Mr. Babylon, you know, you, you meet Christians who would say to you, you must work on your career, you must be a good citizen, you know, uh, you must look for safety and security. A, a whole Christian saying that, you uh, know, we're building security for ourselves, it's good for you to seek for security as a believer. The Bible says the day of the Lord, when it comes, people will be saying that safety, safety and security people will be saying safety and security when the day of the lord comes and then all of a sudden destruction will come upon them so if a christian tells you safety and security build your career buy a car with credit buy a house with credit at the end of the month you pay your bills and then the little that you have you don't do anything for the kingdom you buy something nice again for yourself you know so so you you ask him what do you mean when you say safety and security as a Christian? We are supposed to build and expand and propagate the kingdom of God with whatever resource that we have, you know, and we are not called for safety and security. We are not called for comfort, you know, as believers, especially now, we are supposed to be preparing ourselves for war. You know, if you eat three times a day, you need to prepare yourself to eat twice a day or even once a day you know you need to prepare yourself to be in a situation where you are sharing living space with 20 people you know you don't have to put the like me i like to put the whole milk when i make my tea or my my coffee you know so i have to orientate my mind no man don't put the whole milk in a cup just put a thought i mean you are sharing with 15 other people so why i did this was for us to assess how deeply engraved and tattooed we are a to Mr. Babylon, do we hold the same priorities as Mr. Babylon? If we are, it is going to be extremely difficult for us when the time for physical coming out, when the Holy Ghost begins to call the church to come out physically speaking, uh, because now the Holy Ghost is calling the church to come out of Babylon, but it's not a physical coming out. It's a spiritual coming out. It's a mental coming out. It's an emotional coming out, you know, a uh, we should distance ourselves from the things of Babylon. We should cancel our Netflix. I'm saying it outright because there's nothing godly in Netflix. We should cancel our television subscriptions. There's nothing godly that comes from, hear me, there's nothing godly that comes from Hollywood. You know, so that is the coming out that is required now. Separating of ourselves. Decrease a time with socialization and increase prayer time worship time we need to do that we need to consecrate ourselves god is calling us to come out of babylon we can't attend every party we can't attend every event there's that coming out now happening now but now there's going to be a physical coming out uh, and when that happens if we are so entrenched and if we are so tattooed to mr babylon and her priorities if you hold your house so dear if you hold your car so dear believe you me you are not when the holy ghost says come out you are not going to be able to come out even if you do is what is going to happen is uh, remember lord's wife the bible says they came out and then she looked back and then jesus explains to us why she looked back because of the things that she cared for that she left behind so the same thing is going to happen to you and me so the question is, if the call for coming out physically to go and live in the bush, if it comes out, will you come out? It's going to be difficult if your mind is the same as Mr. Babylon's mind. We need to prepare ourselves to separate from our comforts, you know, and live in the bush where there's no flushing toilet, where there is no electricity. As someone who's employed, you need to prepare yourself to live without your job, you know. So, which means we cannot put our hope entirely on our, on the supermarket system. We have to prepare ourselves to get out of the supermarket system. So, the question is, what are you doing? What have you been doing? I looked at the, the box that we are having in the house, uh, trying to prepare. There are so many things that we didn't have that we still need to get. You know, we didn't have paraffin. We didn't have... Uh, a portable a stove that can be able to cook without electricity you, you know so we still need to get those things so please you also need to work on those things so how do we escape mr babylon we escape like noah escaped what noah did he built the ark 
and we also escape like Joseph escaped the famine that that famine that was in Egypt uh, he told the king he said let's throw away 20 percent of the harvest that comes through for the seven during the seven years of plenty so basically myself if I go to a grocery shop now uh, and then I buy I make sure that 20% of what I buy is what I store away for rainy days so that's how we escape and in terms of how Noah built the ark we pray we say God where am I going to be where am I going to escape to I hear a lot of people saying that they are coming to Africa to escape the uh, the system of Mr. Babylon when it's fully fleshed uh, I also believe that Africa is going to be an ark uh, like Noah Africa is going to be an ark that carries the saints during that time. You know, so you pray, God, where must I be? Must I be in my country? Must I be in another country? You know, so if you do not have money, if you do not have resources, you pray and you ask God to give you the resources. But also what you must do is to plug yourself in to a community that is actively preparing uh, for, for the time when we are chased out of the system. Uh, so, so, so you plug yourself into that community and you live with that community and you make sure you find believers who believe that there's going to be a time where we are not supposed to work, to go to our workplaces where we're not supposed to use money. Because some believers, they don't believe it. So you plug yourself in, you know. So now, what have you prepared as, as a Noah uh, or, or as a Joseph? How much of the 20% have you put away, you see? Or in terms of your grain, in terms of everything that you go, medical supplies. So how do you prepare for that? Uh, I mean, it, it, you, we should be about that, you know. And in terms of Noah, you ask God, God, where am I going to be? Where is my ark going to be? So you pray. It's a spiritual type of preparation. And the Lord will reveal it to you. The Lord, the Lord has revealed to me in terms of where me and my family are going to be. And so that's how we prepare. When do we come out? Like I said, there are two coming out. There is a first, the spiritual coming out, which is coming out of the system, uh, separating ourselves and consecrating ourselves to God, separating ourselves from the world, from the entertainment of the world, from the music of the world, from the culture of the world, uh, from the systems of the world, the, the way the world does business. So th there's a call for believers to come out of that system now, which is spiritually speaking. And then the coming out out physically of, of the land where you are now. Biblically speaking, it's going to happen when God is about to judge um, Babylon. Remember, that call is made when God is about to judge Babylon. And when God judges Babylon after the rise of the Antichrist. When eight, Revelation 18 verse 4, when it says, come out of my people, God is about to judge uh, Babil Babylon, Mr. Babylon. Uh, but that time already uh, the antichrist has, is, has risen and is ruling so that's when you physically come out so if ever um, there is no one who who who, who wants to, who has built a temple in jerusalem who has united um, all the faiths of the world and who has said he will give the world peace and safety and who is not calling for anyone to worship them we cannot come out so we come out after that because revelation 18 uh, god calls us to come out when he's about uh, to judge uh, Mr. Babylon when, when, when the Antichrist is already in place and who comes out uh, many believers come out only a few are going to remain uh, we know that uh, some believers are going to die in Babylon the Bible says uh, she, she's drunk with the blood of the saints you know uh, so but a large population of the church is supposed to come out so those are the people who come out like I said that um, Revelation is addressed to four groups of believers, those who must live or who must come out of Babylon, which is like 80% of the saints, you know, and that's the first group. The second group is a group that is going to go to war with Babylon and, and, and Antichrist, you know, that's the second group. The third group is the one that is going to be arrested. The Bible says you are going to be arrested so that your faith can be tested uh, and die in prison. So for, for, for 10 days, the Bible says. You know, so so those are the three groups that are, are prominently going to heaven. The last group is not going to heaven, uh, which is called the lost saints. Um, we'll talk about them sometime. You know, but this is the group that the Bible says, "I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I'm going to expose you to the great tribulation because you have tolerated the teachings of Jezebel." So, uh, the Book of Revelation actually addresses four types of well, four groups of believers. So, you must know which one you are, and you must understand your mandate during that time.
that's what it is you know so i thought i was gonna look into uh the antichrist vis versus mr babylon but uh, and then i felt the need to just focus on christianity and how closely linked we are and how in love we are with mr babylon because every time when i pray i see that there is a difficulty from christians when the lord says come out come out so the christians we are struggling to come out is because we are tattooed to and we are chained to mr babylon and we need to uh, begin to separate ourselves and break those chains of Mr. Babylon. So, so thank you so much for watching this. Uh, the next video is going to be, we are going to look more into this God's thing, this uh, God's in heaven that are impure. There's the something that the Holy Ghost showed me that I need us to look into uh, in this God's thing. So thank you very much for watching this far. Uh, for being with us as we tackle like i always say taboo and difficult christian topics with the aim that you and i will grow in our intimacy with god may the lord yahweh bless you shalom